Hello again, fellow Yacha brothers and sisters, and welcome to chapter 23 of Return of the Earth Defenders. Now, I tried to record this like a few days ago, but for some reason the camera just whoosh on me. It like didn't work. So here we are recording it right now. It's Thursday, and it's like 9.13, so I have to literally jump right into this recording. But anyway, uh... <laughs> Anyway, um, pretty much, um, pretty much sequel's almost complete. The sequel to this is almost complete. I just need to come up with a few names, plan some scenes out, get the action scenes in, the final boss, and then the ending, and yada, yada, yada. But anyway, <clears throat> and just like for all you out there, you said you wanted more warnings on, more of the warnings if there's, you know, a sex scene gonna happen, which is hence the naughtiness ensues warnings. I'll make sure I improve on that in the sequel, because it's definitely gonna need it. So, anyway, chapter 23, A Kaiju Christmas. Warning, naughtiness ensues. <laughs> the headquarters of the Japanese, of the Japanese base was as festive as ever. The place was amazing, and it sparkled like no other. Godzilla looked as much as he could for whatever he could find. Perfect, Godzilla smiled. Well, well, well. This definitely is turning out well. A familiar face rang out as Godzilla turned around, meaning a familiar face. Lieutenant Morgan heard you were dead. Ah, the Battle Nation's character. They, they had a lot of good dialogue, and it was just absolutely hilarious. For all of you who haven't played Battle Nations, you could just, like, look up some of the dialogue, some of the story dialogue online. It's, it's quite hilarious, trust me. Silla so smiled. I was until that idiot Perkins cloned me. Not that I didn't mind, but still, that private doesn't have his head in the right mind sometimes. Morgan answered. The minute he said that, said this, Perkins walked up to Sergeant Ramsey with a stupid smile on his face. Where do I put these grenades, sir? Perkins asked. Yeah, Perkins, you idiot! Be careful with those! You could have blown us up! And I meant get a box of ornaments, not grenades! Sergeant Ramsey grumbled after being starved to death. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Perkins replied as he carried the box off. Godzilla and Morgan shook their heads. For once, we agree, Lu we agree, Lieutenant. What are you units doing here? Shouldn't you guys be in the U.S. where it's more naturistic and not full of fish? Godzilla asked. Morgan chuckled at his response. Well, actually, we're here to celebrate Christmas with you, the lieutenant told him. Yeah, right. Like you just so happen to have a day off on Christmas while you two are working in in the military. Told him, giving an odd look. All right, fine, fine. We need you to back at the secret base in New York. They need you and Angiris to sing a few songs for them. Mostly, it has to be something about you or similar to your personality. Lieutenant Morgan explained. What kind of Christmas tradition is that? Angiris asked. Apparently, what kind of Christmas tradition is that? Angiris asked. Apparently, it's one for the military, I guess. Lieutenant Morgan told him. Fine. Lucky, lucky, lucky we built a fighter in the Gatango. We can use that. Godzilla told him. They all then flew to their destination as they were looking for the place they needed needed to go. Perkins, <clears throat> Perkins continued to assist Sergeant Ramsey as they got the tree up. Floyd and Martha were chatting while Zoe and Spitfire were also explaining everything. The others were thinking of getting, getting each other's gifts. The tree ornaments were easily hung up, but there was only one piece missing. The star on top. Okay, guys. So who's going to put the star... Put the star on top, Martha asked. I will, Rodan replied as he gently floated it up to the top. I can't believe it's Christmas already, Baragon realized. 
Yeah, what happened to this year? Why did it go by so fast? Martha asked. At least with the ones we love, this is going to be one of our best Christmases ever, Rodan told them. Mm. Thank goodness for that, Martha breathed. Well, we're going to go downstairs to see if Morgan needs our help, Floyd spoke as he led Perkins, Ramsey, and Zoe out the door. Vinyl Scratch approached Martha with a seductive look in her eyes. Hey, Martha, I want to give you your Christmas present early, Vinyl told him. Five asterisks later. All right, but where is it? Martha asked. <clears throat> it's upstairs, and I need you to follow me, Final Scratch cooed to him. Okay, Martha shrugged. Martha followed her up to his room. Vinyl quickly shut the door as she took off her clothes, showing her beautiful naked body to Martha's eyes. Do you like it? Vinyl asked. You know with how much I love you that I don't mind, because I love you for who you are, Martha told her. Aw, thanks, Vinyl replied as both moved to the bed looking at each other with bedroom eyes. Martha uses feet to touch and massage her breasts, inflicting a longing moan from her. Oh, goodness, here we go, here we go. <clears throat> uh, you know how much I love it when you do that. Oh, God! <laughs> Vinyl gasped. I can't help that you're beautiful, Martha told her. Then please, rat me once more. Vinyl moaned after casting a soundproof spell. Oh, boy. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's my cat. Say hi to Simba. <laughs> hi, kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> then I will expect... Then I will, except I'm going to do it in my super form, Martha grinned mischievously. Oh no, what's gonna happen? <laughs> Vinyl's eyes widened as her heart, heart leapt out with excitement. Then please, do me! She, she just breathed out, oh god! Why, why does this keep a <laughs> <laughs> As you wish, Martha replied. The room then became filled with Martha's groans and Vinyl's loud desire. So she called Martha's name countless times. Oh, God. <laughs> a, few hours, a few hours passed as the bed sheets were once again a mess. Ew. As Martha's skin was back to normal, Vinyl was seeing stars, her tongue out from the side of her mouth drooling from what she, is, from what she received. Her eyes were rolled into, into the back of her head as she lay there gasping and gaping. Oh, oh my god, what? Oh, oh. Gee whiz, Martha, you could have take you, you could have got easy on the woman. <laughs> oh, Martha. Oh, God. <laughs> Vinyl moaned out. Martha, get, Martha once again felt her breasts. He always loved to have a little foreplay with his wife. I take it you enjoyed that? Martha asked. I adored it, Vina replied. <laughs> the two then kissed passionately, moaning into his mouth before fighting for air. Another French kiss, another French kiss. Mmm, at least our baby may like father's milk, Vinyl hummed softly. Wait! Oh, whoa, 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 wait, what? What? Martha looked at her with surprise, tr surprise, trying to process her words. Y you m mean, Martha st stammered before final finish, final finish. 
Yes, I'm pregnant with your baby, Martha. You're going to be a father. Vida hummed happily. My man! <laughs> My boy, my boy, my boy, my boy, yeah, congrats, that's my man, I don't know what I'm doing right now, the sudden shock is, that was my Christmas present, Martha asked. Yes, and I still wanted to have fun, some fun with you. Ho, 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 Vina breathed out. I can't believe you are going to be a father, Martha said in shock. Vino giggled. Don't worry, hon, you're going to be a good father, and I'm glad to be giving birth to your baby, Vina smiled, rubbing her tummy in a motherly way. Martha laid on top of her with a smile on his face, and you know... On his face. You know I'm lucky I married you, Martha told her. You are the best thing that could have ever happened to me, Vina breathed out. I was going I was going to say the same thing. When did you find out you were pregnant? Martha asked. A few weeks ago. When you were at the Lost Kingdom, I began to throw up and was very hungry. And my magic was on the fritz. Soon I did a pregnancy test to be sure it came back positive. For 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 the anthem for pretty much for pretty much the all the equestrian versions of the MLP characters, that's those are signs of pregnancy. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. They just they just didn't show it in, in like the actual show with Cadence, cause <laughs> No one wants to know. <laughs> ah. My leg. There we go. Ah. Camera. I guess my retirement will come up soon, Martha told her. Vinyl giggled. Yes, maybe. I do hope you survive this war. I want you to be at my side, Vinyl said as she looked into his eyes, holding him tightly. I always will, Martha smiled. Ah! Five asterisks later. Okay, we got our equipment ready. Godzilla. What's the first song we're going to sing? Angiris asked as they prepared the stage. Since I'm the main singer, I've got the two perfect ones. Ones ready, Godzilla asked. We're ready, and I think I know what songs you picked, Angiris replied. Good, let's begin, Godzilla told them as they readied themselves. Now, I would sing this song. This is I Am All of Me by Crush 40, and no, I don't own this either. But apparently this is so many different voices that I'm just horrible at it. So we're we're gonna skip this. Y'all y'all can go y'all can go y'all can just look up this song. Just look up I Am All of Me by Crush Forty on, on with lyrics on YouTube. It'll pop up like these songs and then you could just click on it and then listen to it. Mm. Everyone gave a round of applause as the first song for the Christmas ended. All right, good work, guys. We're going to be in a, be on in the next five minutes. Godzilla told them. Well, at least we get a break. Angira scoffed. Don't worry. Hopefully, we will be done soon. Godzilla explained. Five minutes passed by soon as they entered the stage preparing to sing their next song. Now I don't even need to sing this song because I got like a because I I had downloaded for Godzilla's intro. And it's going to be, and I even got the full version for you and the, the title of it. So hit it!
Okay, hopefully this is working. It messed up again, but anyway, back to the story. The crowd was going crazy. They all cheered, roared, or said, Unibon, dude! <laughs> they both only smiled as they walked up the stage as they prepared the long flight home. Godzilla is the bomb. He's always the bomb. <laughs> Five asterisks later. Godzilla and Anguirus had returned. Just in time as everyone had eaten the Christmas boar ham that Lieutenant Morgan had acquired. Ah, that. I remember. I remember. I played Battle Nations a lot back then before it was removed. Soon all of them prepared to gather around the Christmas tree. Shifter and Godzilla stood in the corner. How was Christmas like in the Lost Kingdom? Godzilla asked. It was... different, Shifter replied. Huh, interesting, Godzilla answered. They then drew closer towards each other. Godzilla then saw a mistletoe connected to a piece of string hovering heads. Paragon, I will effing murder you! <laughs> Godzilla pointed angrily. Baragon laughed, pulling the mistletoe away. Ah, come on, you two! You know you wanna, Baragon answered. Not now, Baragon! Godzilla grumbled. Fine then! <laughs> Ah, camera. Sighed as he left, leaving the mistletoe above their heads. They both looked at each other. Their eyes glowed bright pink once more. Their spikes pulsed once with their extraordinary colors as they breathed a small atomic fire. Godzilla's atomic fire was neon blue, while Shifter's was a beautiful glowing pink. The flames mixed and danced sensually as it, as it finally faded out. Oh, 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 that's, that's how Godzillasaurus is a dragon's kiss. Oh, they kiss. Oh, my goodness. They did a flame kiss. Oh. As, as the two then approached each other as their lips met. Double kiss! Double kiss! A flame kiss and then the normal one! They kissed each other as long and passionately as possible. Godzilla had not felt like a kiss, a kiss like this in years. Shifter herself was amazed as she felt the most heavenly reptilian lips, as this was her first kiss in her entire life. Due to how strong their imprinting instinct was, Godzilla pulled Shifter closer to him, gripping her beautiful back and having his claw grope her beautiful butt, making Shifter moan deeply and lovingly to the kiss. Oh my goodness! That's a real passionate kiss! The two then parted their kiss for air. Their eyes still glowed pink. Godzilla could see in those eyes that she was wanting, begging for Godzilla to mate with her dominantly. He could see the urge and need in her eyes, but they quickly shook off the powerful instinct. Good God, is it pretty? <laughs> Ramsey, Perkins, and Floyd let out cheers, wolf whistles, and hollers from seeing the kiss they had. <laughs> Godzilla had an annoyed but embarrassing look on his face. Shut up, you idiots, he grumbled. Hey, man, that has to be one of the best kisses I've ever seen. <laughs> Ram Ramsey chuckled. So it would seem, Godzilla sighed. But da 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 da
I think it was beautiful, Shifter said to him as she let out a pleasant sigh. <clears throat> Godzilla smiled as they all went to the tree. Sorry for my sniffling, I, it's summer allergies. Okay, so whose present is first, Godzilla asked. Well, Godzilla and we gave our presents gave our presents for Christmas, Shifter blushed. Well, I must say it was about time you two had your first kiss, Angiris grinned. Here, Morgan, I got this present for you, Angiris replied. As Morgan opened it opened, his mouth drooled as he pulled out a bottle of unique brandy. Oh no <laughs> You know Morgan he loves the stuff some distillery stuff like some moonshine some some brandy yeah he he's like that Oh this stuff is dynamite Morgan grinned Go easy on it I went through a lot of hoops to get it Angira said Thanks man Morgan replied The others opened their presents Floyd got a new scientific rival, should he encounter zombies next time. Perkins got cookies, he didn't mind at all. And Giris got a present for Morgan, which was an Asus 650cc motorcycle. He only grinned. Zoe got a vehicle keychain, she wore it now. And Ramsey got an M2104 lasered minigun designed just for him. Alright, any other presents? Kazla asked. Actually, I have a press. Actually, I have a present to Moth. We told him, and we wanted to share it with you. Vinyl told them. Um, okay. The others replied skeptically. I'm pregnant, and Moth is the father. Vinyl admitted. All the jaws in the room practically dropped <laughs> to the floor after hearing the news. Their shocks turned into grins as some of them spoke. Well, dip my peanut in butter and roll me in jelly. You hear that, boys? My man Mothra is going to be a father. <laughs> Gary shouted. Get the S out of here. What? Really? I can't believe that father to be a father, Rodan realized. My boy, you did plot after all these years. I'm so proud. Paragon Grits. <laughs> I can just imagine Paragon just wearing that, that, uh, the, the squid were like, cr cr the, and that, and wearing that, you like Krabby Patty Squidward face on him. You like Krabby Patty. <laughs> Word. Mm. I can just imagine him wearing that face. I, I can imagine Baragon just having that face on him. Shut up, you perverted idiot, Angira said as he punched him in the shoulder. They were all excited and asked many questions. They both were going to keep and raise their own child, but they only wanted to name it when it was born. Martha's going to be a father already? I can't believe how lucky we are getting, Angiris told him. Yeah, it looks like we're finally finding love and having a family of our own to keep, even after all its lonely years, Godzilla grinned. Finally, they all gathered back at the tree after hearing the news, Moth Martha and Vinyl, the news, Martha and Vinyl snuggling close to each other. So who has any other presents? And Gazel asked, Well, Angiris, I have a present for you this year, Flutterbad said to him. What is it? Angiris asked. Angiris, when we met in that nightclub and learned about more about each other, I came with you not because you were different, that I realized that we loved each other very much. And with the many dates we've been on, I've realized that I've loved you very much. So much that I want to ask if you can be my husband by kaiju laws. Flutterbad confessed. Okay, I'm gone. Goodbye. <laughs> the 
X, if I get an X, just me. I'm, if someone just tries to text me while I'm recording, I'm just gonna be like, okay, I'm gone, goodbye. <laughs> Bear God stated as he left, I think we'll join you. <laughs> Off the road in Godzilla, Spitfire and Pinkie Pie all left with him while Lieutenant Morgan and his crew had out early. Angira <laughs> stared at Flutterbat as he replied, Flutterbat, for a while I have loved you very much, despite how naughty and seductive you are. Ooh la la! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Camera! Why you do this? You have always been what makes me happy. In those days, his, our kisses are remarkable, and I love much as much as I love you. I'd be lying if I didn't say I loved you back. So yes, Flutterbat, I will marry you by Kaiju Laws, Angiris replied. The two then kiss, kissed each other passionately, moaning into the kiss as their tongues danced in a French kiss. French, bah, bah, French kiss. The two then parted for air. Vino then used her magic as she casted a soundproof spell in Angurus's room. I put a soundproof spell in Angurus's room. It will it will turn up it will it will expire when you two are done, the Vino informed, as she went to get the others back. Come my mate. It's time we had what I've been wanting for a long time. Flutterbat smirked as she walked up, swaying her hips seductively as Angiris followed her. Oh no, here we go again! <laughs> Five asterisks later. <clears throat> they both entered Angiris' room, closing the door and locking it. Flutterbat then informed Angiris to stay here as she changed into a very skimpy outfit. Her legs were covered in pink s in a pink swimsuit with design covering her legs that had pink bats on it. The torso part of her outfit was black and it showed much of her cleavage. The arm stocking she wore was a light greenish. <clears throat> And she stares seductively at Anguirus, licking her lips in anticipation. Like what you see? she asked. Wow, Flutterbat, Anguirus gasped. Flutterbat giggled. I made this outfit when I arrived here, and I've kept it for this very moment, Flutterbat explained. The two kids passionately as Flutterbat moaned into his mouth. Mm. The two then parted as Fluttersh, Fluttersh, Flutterbat guided Angurus's claws as she had him undress her. Angurus stared at her beautiful naked form. Her breasts were kind of big, but luckily she had an injection that kept her from getting back plums. Both of them approached as Flutterbat eyed her mate as Angira showed her his equipment. <clears throat> Flutterbat had longed for this as the two got on the bed, Angira's giving Flutterbat a small bite on her neck, making her arch her back and moan loudly. Uh, Angiris, I've loved you ever since I laid eyes on you. And now all of my vampire bad pony instincts are at their full of bullets. So please, tame me. Make me yours. Flutterbat panted. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I will. And I'll make sure you adore every bit of it, Angiris answered. The two mated with each other as Angiris loud as groans, while Flutterbat moaned, hollered, and screamed Angiris' name. As the two went wild, oh goodness, well she is, she did say she was kind of a part succubus, so you know how wild they get. <laughs> the bed was a mess, morning had arrived as they began to wake from their slumber. The bed was a mess, as usual, but Flutterbat woke up. She looked to see her new wedding ring that had recently appeared after the two were done. 
for the best smile as she basked in the, in the moment. And Gyrus was lying on top of her, clawing on one of her breasts as a small grass made Flutterbat let out a moan. And Gyrus woke up staring into Flutterbat's eyes. Good morning, beautiful, he told her. Mmm, oh, and Gyrus, that was better than I could ever dream, Flutterbat smiled. That was nice, I admit, and Gyrus told her. Do you have a pool in your room? Flutterbat asked. Well, I have a pool for fun, but yeah, of course I do. Why? Angiris asked. Flutterbat gave him a mischievous look as she got up with Angiris as they quickly cleaned the sheets as they headed for the pool. Five asterisks later. Both of them entered the, entered the pool. Flutterbat was still naked as she and the still-exposed Angiris entered. She began ki- <clears throat> And she began kiss, kissing Angiris passionately. After moaning into Angiris passionately, after moaning into the kiss, she stepped away. Flutterbat gave Angiris a sexy dance, swaying her hips seductively as she caressed herself, letting him know how lucky he was. What? Oh my God! What? Damn! You score big time with this bloody girl! Finally, she approached to the stunned anchors as she whispered two words. Ravage me, fluttered back cooed. Oh god! Anguirus pounced, spreading his claws around her, grasping her, br her butt and her breasts, as Flutterbat let out an exotic moan. Angiris then once again gave her a small bite in her neck, making Flutterbat moan loudly. Ready for round two? Angiris asked. P Please just ravage me, Flutterbat moaned. As you wish, Angiris told her. The pool was now filled with splashes, Angiris' grunts, and Flutterbat's very erotic moans. A few hours passed as they both were asleep in the pool, Flutterbat having the same look on her as her face as before. I love you, Flutterbat whispered to Anguirus. I love you too, Anguirus told Flutterbat. I'm finally happy. Now I don't have to search for other mates, Flutterbat sighed happily. And I don't have to spend my life alone, Anguirus told her. Mmm, I'm glad it was you, and I can't wait to give birth to our children, Flutterbat cooed. Me too, Anguirus smiled. Ah! As the two then cleaned themselves off in the shower and started their new day. Five asterisks later. The portal opened in Japan, in, in the Japan park, as a similar undead face made its appearance. Hmm. Bizarro has finally made it! Now he shall destroy the black lizard that destroys Superman into Bizarro! Bizarro growled. He also had a mission that he won at. One he wanted to make personal. Oh! Oh! No! Oh! What's Bizarro gonna be up to? And... That's the end. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. This is gonna be print 2525. Signing off.